This is a KABC Impact Issues Forum. Proposition 6. Should the gas tax be repealed? Now, here's Peter Tilden. Talk Radio 790 KABC. Peter Tilden 10 continues. Hour number two. Always brought to you by Larry Miller and Sit and Sleep. Of course, it'll be anyone's advertised price or your mattress is free. So, Prop 6, um, the recall of the gas tax, is a very high-profile measure. Joining us, Robin Swanson, who's no on Prop 6. Good morning, Robin. How Good are? morning. Good Thanks for having you. me on. Uh, strategist, communications expert with more than 20 years of political experience under your belt, working inside the Capitol and in Washington, D.C. and Sacramento, California. You got that correct? Uh, you got that right. And then Carl DeMaio, who's yes on Prop 6, who's a businessman, spokesperson for yes on Prop 6, Republican politician, former member of San Diego City Council, host of a daily radio show, the DeMaio Report on KOGO in San Diego. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. How you do? Well, thank you both for coming in. It's a, it's a big deal, and, and people need to be informed and know what they're voting for or what they're voting against. So I maybe start with Robin and just give me an intro, Robin, for about a minute, minute and a half about your overall your overall. Um, points on this Prop 6. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having me on because educating voters on this issue is critically important. Prop 6 is a dangerous attack on our roads and bridges. Um, when the California Highway Patrol and firefighters and the civil engineers who build our bridges and roads tell me something's a really bad idea because it's dangerous, I believe them. So Prop 6 would undermine funding for more than 6,500 local projects statewide that would fix our roads and bridges. Right here in Los Angeles County, that's $4.4 billion in funds that are going to disappear if Prop 6 passes. It's irresponsible, it's reckless, and voters really need to understand exactly what it's going to do. I thank you. Carl? Well, you just heard it, uh, the scare tactics. It's dangerous. You're going to die in a car accident. The bridge is going to fall. And all you need to do is trust politicians with more of your hard-earned money. The reality is this. California's cost of living is skyrocketing higher and higher. Uh, too many working families are getting to the end of the month, and they're already behind on their bills, yet they're working uh, multiple jobs. We got to give some cost of living relief to working families. A gas tax or car tax increase is a sucker punch to their budget. That's why over a million Californians work together to put this on the ballot. A yes vote on Prop 6 will repeal the unfair, regressive car tax and gas tax increases that the politicians implemented without a public vote. That's why we're urging a yes on 6. All right, so there are a lot of questions about what will happen. I see the lines are lit up. Again, I urge you to call with your questions, 800-222-5222. Uh, I'll start with Robin. Yeah. Uh, you know, we asked listeners to send in emails so I could ask their question, represent them. And I got a bunch that were the same version of, we've been paying gas taxes. Um, and vehicle registration taxes forever. And we, we keep hearing that that money was allocated to transportation and funding. And it seems that it doesn't go there. We all, there's always a workaround that we say to politicians, here's your money for that. And it goes to the general fund. It goes to high speed rail. And then a couple of years later, it's, we need this again. You get a tax. And now I know you're going to say the tax hasn't been around for, we haven't raised tax, gas tax in a while, but Taxes, the workaround is that they use them for other stuff to help the general fund, like I said, high-speed rail, et cetera. How do you answer the fact that we've been paying for a long time and yet we're in this situation of kicking the can down the road? Was, why was it not applied if it was prioritized at that time? Sure. I think these are important questions. And yes, we haven't had transportation funding in over 23 years. And now uh, Carl over here wants to turn back the clock. And I find it a little ironic because the only politician in this room is council member Carl over there. But uh, then he's the one that's bringing you. And the, the only one. Oh, can you please let me finish my The only my one thought. paid to be Hold here on. is her. Hold on. Hold I'm on. a volunteer. You're right. paid to be here. Hold on. Say it when it's your turn. Give, <laughs> give us a minute. Yeah, I would like to finish that thought because I thought it was yeah. a really important question. And voters did something really important in June. They passed Past Prop 69. That was something that ensured that every penny that goes to transportation is spent on transportation projects statewide. Voters are starting to see that up and down the state. And again, 6,500 projects are at risk because of Carl's irresponsible political plan here. And, you know, he is very cavalier about safety. I'm a mom. It's my job to worry. So he can be cavalier about that, but I'm worried about getting my kid to school safe. Carl, as far as the money we've been, again, yeah. same question, we've been taxed in the past, and we see the shape of the highways. 
um, people are saying it's not a priority. It, look, you have a paid PR flack sitting here, uh, f- uh, p- part of a $50 million campaign. I'm a working mom. Yeah, you're a working mom. I gotcha. And uh, the reality is this. You hit on exactly the issue here. Not only is it a cost of living uh, punch to working families, $779.28, uh, higher tax per year for a typical family of four. Another but imaginary this, number from Carl. But on top of this, it's a fraud because we've already been paying some of the highest gas taxes in the country. The money has been diverted and stolen. The few crumbs that we get to see in road projects are colossally wasted in terms of uh, audits that have been done showing waste, fraud, and abuse. And so now they're saying trust the same people who lied and stole from us for the last 20 years. Prop 69 is not accountable. It is not an earmark. It actually allows politicians to divert the money and spend the money any way they want. It is not going to fix the roads. All right, let me let me try and get in as many calls as we can, too, because they've got a, a lot of good issues. Great. Uh, Gerard, Gerard, is it you in Long Beach? Come yes. On. yes uh, I'm a business owner in Long Beach, and I've seen a lot of work that's happening right now with, uh, with the uh, gas tax money to help fix the roads. What will happen with this repeal when it goes away? What happens to those projects? All right, let me, you know what, we can start with, let me, let me start this time with Carl, and then we can go to Rob. Go uh, ahead, Carl. Gerard, you know what is, is uh, uh, frustrating about this is that you've already paid for those projects. You've paid for those projects over the last 20 years, year after year, with some of the highest gas taxes in the nation. This latest increase, prop, uh, uh, the uh, SB1 gas tax, gives us the highest gas tax in the country. And so w- what is so frustrating is that the politicians are taking hostages, and they're putting a gun to the head and saying, if you don't raise your taxes, we cancel the projects. The reality is every single one of those projects can and should be funded out of the existing gas tax. If we allocated 100% of the gas tax to the roads, every one of those projects would be funded. But the money has been diverted, and even the latest increase has been diverted as well. And none of that is true. Carl DeMaio is known Mm. for telling DeMaio doozies. I work with the firefighters and the CHP, and they really don't take kindly to people who are not straight shooters. And so they've come up with a list, and I love the name. They call it DeMaio doozies, and boy, does he have them. One of them (laughs) is the numbers that he keeps throwing out. They're eternally changing, so he pulls them out of the sky. The truth is, and thank you for your question, Drew, because it was actually what will happen to these projects. The truth is, what do you think is going to happen with the funding goes away with these 6,500 projects? Do you think they will continue? No. And what a waste that would be. Imagine with government waste, if we start projects and we don't finish them, if these safety projects, if if putting up guardrails and finishing our roads and, and repaving I-5 and all these projects in Los Angeles, if we have to stop midway through because of Carl's irresponsible political play. What do you think will happen to these projects? All right, Carl, let me ask you a question, yeah. and, and, then, and I'll give you a chance to answer this also. Sure. We'll take a break and take some more calls. Um, the accusation is this is a political move to generate you know, interest in voters and get them out, get Republican voters out in a, in a blue state because gas tax, it, it is, it's a very emotional issue, and it's a, a persuadable issue. Let's put it that way. It's easily understandable. What do you say to that as we're somewhere in between here is what product is going to be stopped? How safe are we going to be? How much waste is there? That said, from that point of view, how do you defend that, that this is maybe purely a political ploy to get people oh, you out? Want, you want to talk politics. Who are the politicians that are backing the gas tax increase? They're all the Sacramento politicians, Governor Brown and the legislators who raised our taxes without even giving us a chance to vote on this thing. Not and true. you want to talk about a public uh, 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 outcry. Talk about the nearly million people who signed this initiative to put it on the ballot. Prop 6 was supported by hundreds of thousands of Democrats, independents, and Republicans who are working families from all walks of life who are sick and tired of being nickeled and dimed to death and then being told, oh, we're going to fix your roads, we'll fix your schools, we'll take care of the kids, we'll take care of these things, and seeing the money diverted. The, the, the games have got to stop, and we need real accountability on the existing gas tax before we trust politicians with another nickel. So how do you, how do you answer uh, that that accusation when you say, okay, starting now, we're really going to start applying the tax to the roads where people, uh, obviously the turnout was large, and large, also big money is going to be spent from here on in to try and affect this on both sides. How do you answer people who are skeptical, who may vote no, and I don't know what the polling is today, who may vote no simply because they don't trust that it's going to be applied to where it needs to go? What's the guarantee? You mean vote well, people yes. should absolutely vote no yeah, vote on yes. Prop I mean, 6. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, then, no, let's make sure people, people should, understand. Yes, yes. Can, I, can I correct sure. you? Oh, my goodness. How in, about- order, in order to repeal the gas tax, it's a yes vote on 6, and Robin represents a no vote on 6. There you go. Yes, I'm sorry. That's right. And to, to Carl, I mean, I would say, you know what? 
there are no partisan potholes. There's no Republican potholes. There's no Democratic potholes. There are only dangerous potholes. what is the transparency? What do you say to them as far as transparency that there's accountability? That Article 19 of the California Constitution and Prop 69, which voters passed overwhelmingly in June, say that every penny of this is going directly to transportation funds and safety features. So when you see those guardrails being fixed, when you see your roads being repaved, when you see 100 miles on I-5 being repaved, when you say when you see 303 projects in Los Angeles County alone fixing our roads, when you see 51 safety improvement projects for pedestrians and bicyclists, I want to take my kid to school in a safe road. So on you're a saying safe transparency road. is baked into this in a way that we've Absolutely. never seen before. Let's take a brief break. A Carl's, ready, Carl's ready to go. Carl DeMaio, yes on Prop 6. Robin Swanson, no on Prop 6. All the lines are lit. It is, a, as I said, it is a very persuadable issue. It's a high-profile measure. Uh, we're going to get into, when we come back, what we really pay, what taxes you're really paying now and where they are going. And also, I want to talk a little bit about pension reform and the problem that that eats up so much of our money. Um, maybe we look at that reform, too, and how you address those issues, the pension reform, and how that ties into this. Uh, 800-222-5222. Peter Tillman at 10 continues right after this. Talk with you, 790K ABC. Peter Tillman, hour number two, we are doing this impact issues form hopefully we'll do it on a lot of the props so you know what's coming up how to vote and you're informed this is on prop six robin swanson's here from no on prop six card to mile yes on prop six and i want to urge you to to watch us uh, our live on facebook stream which is facebook backslash kbc radio and from our live stream jared wright writes how can we have a first world economy when our roads are in third world conditions which is a, a good statement but let's go to uh, Eric in Burbank. Eric, what's your question? Good morning. Uh, my question, good morning, Peter. Long time no talk to you. Uh, my question is to the uh, the young lady here. Um, you know, you, you mentioned in your babies that you take care of your daughters. Um, what about, I mean, uh, and to me, I, I can imagine that you have sort of like a successful bastion in your finances to where this doesn't really affect you. But what about the people who have to make hardcore decisions? How much bread to buy? How, you know, instead of gasoline, how much eggs? You know, they, they have various decisions that they have to make every day to survive. And the, my last question is, the average everyday person don't know where to find your transparency. It seems buried. It seems like you have to find, you have to look too hard to find your transparency. But my main point is, you know, what about the people? What about the ladies who have babies and they make it very, very hard to take care of the kids because they have to, uh, downgrade on gas or whatever. Eric, right, thanks sure. for thank you. I'll let her answer. And by the way, we've gotten a lot too that's regressive, and then a lot of poor folks have to live further out, so it affects them in, in a in a terrible way because they're drive they're driving further. How do you? How do well, you and they're it? spending more time on more time on those roads. But Eric, um, in answer to your question about transparency, I would highly encourage you to go to noprop six dot com, and you can see all the road projects there um, that are going to be threatened by Prop Six and that will go away, and all the safety projects that'll go away. And yes, as a working mom, my biggest concern is safety on our roads, and that's a problem. But but the the financing piece of it, you know, I spent twelve hundred dollars this year on my tires, uh, replacing tires and alignment, and those are really expensive things, especially when you have kids. But the most important thing to me is getting to and from the grocery store, to and from soccer practice, to and from school, and doing that in a safe way. And you know, those hours that you never get back on Los Angeles roads. You know, getting here, everybody was worried because the four hundred five was closed. There was it was a parking lot. It barely got here so those are hours i never get back with my kids so i feel you as a working mom and as somebody who runs a small business absolutely every penny counts to me all right carl carl DeMeyer. you know this is just so frustrating in that uh working families are being crushed by these taxes and these fees again on our website gastaxrepeal.org you can see the study a typical family of four will pay $779.28 more in tax burden each year because of this uh, it's all documented up there at gastaxrepeal.org that's real money that's about what the average family spends in California on Christmas and that's uh, two years of school lunches at a public school it's one year of textbooks at uh, UCLA all these things are going to be sacrifices and for what so politicians can transfer the money and steal the money as they have year after year? Prop 69 does not provide accountability, and in fact, it allows the governor to use the money. There are two provisions in Prop 69 to allow the governor to transfer the money to cover general fund shortfalls, and there's no money 
earmarked for roads. It says transportation generally, which means high-speed rail, inner-city light rail, transit. A lot of the money's going everywhere but the roads. So to answer the other part of his question, uh, then there was another thing that you mentioned, too, the transparency part. Yeah. Where do I find the transparency? Because you brought up the 405, for instance, and we've spent a billion dollars on the 405, and our commute got slower. Well, again, noprop6.com. We've got all those projects listed. But I think it's really important to address some of the numbers that Carl keeps throwing out because he throws out imaginary numbers. He has this $700 a month number that's imaginary. You know, in his ballot arguments, he says $500 because he would he couldn't get away with saying that $700 number. And then the LAO says, nope, it's $100. But the truth is, if you're spending 12 Twelve hundred dollars fixing your tires and alignment. What do you think that does to Christmas? Where do we get? By the way, we're, and I'll ask you about your numbers in a second, Carl. I've seen numbers of thirty-two hundred dollars damage to cars per year average. I've seen seven hundred. I've seen seven eighty. I've seen nine hundred. Uh, there's all. Where do we get our number? How do you calculate the number of what the damage is? Um, to a car, an average repair cost. Yeah, you know, the TRIP, uh, which is a nonpartisan group out of Washington, D.C., just released a report last week. Um, and they said that the average, and I'm going to go low here, I'm going to go conservative because this is what they've said. The nonpartisan group says $729 per driver. So in, in California. So $729 and damage to your car based on the fact that we have falling apart roads and bridges. For so. both of you, with 30 seconds left, is this a correct number by 2019? When you take all the taxes and fees together in California, I just want to make sure we're working from the same sheet. 47.3 cents in primary and secondary excise taxes, 2 cents on the underground storage tank fee, 9 cents on the sales tax, um, which would be 58.3 cents per gallon, and then you add the federal in at 18.4, we will be paying 76.7 cents by 2019. Does that make – I just want to get the number right. You, know, you don't have it off your The head. number is actually higher. Just state taxes, mandates, and fees to include cap and trade is a dollar per gallon right now in California. It will be $2 per gallon by 2022, according to the LAO. You know, if you go to Arizona, they have a dollar, dollar fifty less per gallon for gas. It's not like they have a secret stash of crude somewhere. This is something that the politicians have foisted on us, and it's time we say enough. Voting right, yes take, on Prop on, 6 let, takes care of that. Go ahead, I, I actually would like to respond to that because, sure. again, Carl, the politician, is is laying out this case, and he is the only one really pushing Prop 6 and this plan to eliminate all of these projects. We've got $4.4 billion in projects that are already happening, that are already allocated here in Los Angeles, that he is going to turn back the clock on public safety. All right, let's take a brief break. I will try to get to all of your calls. You're in the midst of the impact issues forum, as you can hear. It's a little, little heat. It's passion. It's passion. It affects every single person here, whether you drive or not, as far as goods and services and the cost. You can watch live on the Facebook stream at Facebook backslash KABC.com. You can call the, all the lines are lit right now, 800 222 5222, and we'll get to your questions next. KABC, Peter Tilden, live. Uh, we're in the middle of our impact issues form on Proposition 6. I'll get to your calls in a moment. Robin Swanson, no on Prop 6, has joined us. Carl DeMaio, yes on Prop 6. My question, and I guess I'll start, I can start with Robin. Um, when we do these projects, and I, again, transparency keeps coming up. What about oversight on these projects? Because I don't know how we stack up to other states as far as efficiency. I saw a number that we're spending $419,000 per mile on road construction as opposed to Texas. That's $177,000. I'm sure there are different uh, environmental things that enter into that. But the fact is, are we being as efficient as we can? Because, again, when you ask people to raise taxes... They're saying, how do I know my money's being spent prudently? How do I know that Caltrans is prioritizing projects that make sense over projects that don't make any sense? Yeah, I mean, I, but I don't think those numbers that you're using are accurate. One, because I think um, you're comparing roads that are two-lane roads, for example, to Los Angeles. We've got 10, 12-lane roads. So I don't think that those take that into account. I mean, but if you think about L.A. drivers lose 82 hours per year on our roads. They lose $1,700 per year in gas, just lost gas mileage. So there's all kinds of But are numbers. we efficient? Are we efficient at doing That's our roads compared to, compared to but are, are just the construction part? We're, this money's going to go to construction and, and repair. Yeah, are I, we as efficient as other states? Do we know that Caltrans does, should, should, in other words, should maybe they job out 25% of Caltrans to make it more efficient? Are we looking at that? Or are we just saying, 
more taxes. Well, I think there's a lot of things that need to happen in California that don't have to happen in other states. One of them is because we have earthquakes, so we have to make sure that everything um, is seismo- we that the seismologists have to retrofit it, that we actually have to make sure that our roads <laughs> and bridges are safe. Um, you don't need to be rude and laugh. Um, if you look at our bridges, there are 1,600 bridges in need of basic repairs, and according to the National Bridge Inventory, there are 143 structurally deficient bridges here in Los Angeles. Angeles County alone. Structurally deficient. A lot of people here lived through Northridge. A lot of people here, they know they know about the earthquakes that are happening. So it costs more, happening. basically, we have to take that into consideration because of retrofitting, because of earthquakes. Because of safety, because Got of it. public safety. Yeah, Robin says we're special, and that's why we have to waste money in California. Here's a number that I think really gets to what you're asking about, which is how do you compare apples to apples? The Reason Foundation puts out an annual survey of road maintenance costs nationwide, and they take a look at what is the cost per mile of road. They've identified that for California, it's two and a half times per mile of road compared with the rest of the country, the other 49 states. So how about we just try to be as inefficient as the average state government in the rest of the union? Here's another number. When you just isolate administrative costs, because Robin wants to do the old you know, uh, Enron style accounting of, you know, oh gosh, we're so different out here. The reality is administrative costs, according to the Reason Foundation study, is it's 3.6 times the national average. Those are bloated pensions, bloated bureaucracies, and the other thing that's not addressed here is the amount of money that doesn't even reach the roads because it's first diverted to park programs, uh, let's, farm let's, programs, let's, and transit. Let's go to Reed's question because it, it does uh, kind of dovetail with what you're just talking about. Reed, you're on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Good morning. What's your question? Hi, thanks, Peter. Hi, Carl. Hi, Robin. Uh, my question is, Robin keeps talking about all the bridge and road repairs. I want to know what percentage of that $52 billion goes to bridge and road repairs and is not diverted away to other transportation, quote-unquote, issues. Yeah, do, we, it, it's, do we have that calibrate? It's just as we far as... do. It's 100%. Not true. According to the California Constitution, according to Prop 69, which was passed by 81% of voters, overwhelmingly passed Prop 69. According to the California Constitution, it says that revenues derived from this have to go to the vehicle license law, that they have to go to our roads. They have to go to fixing our bridges. And you're already seeing that happen. But this is already a, no, that's not this true. is already happening. These are roads that are these are funds that are already allocated. And Carl, council member Carl, politician Carl here wants to undo before, all before of I let that. Carl answer, so what percentage of a dollar? Is it 20 cents on the dollar? 50 it's cents? How many make it to actually? One dollar. One dollar per dollar. Cent per cent. All of them uh, go to I our don't roads. Believe that. Robin, oh, you don't have to lie. Don't Robin, you don't have to lie. Look, Robin just Council member Carl may I, may I needs to stop being rude and interrupting right, don't me. Be, don't well, be rude. But although, you, I thought you were finished also. So go okay, ahead. So let, let's just look at Prop 69. She just lied to this caller. And, and so I find it unacceptable. If you can't win a campaign by telling the truth. So what's the lie, Carl? Give the me lie specifically. is Prop 69 does not earmark the money for roads and bridges, as she just read. It earmarks money for, quote, transportation-related purposes, which includes transit, high-speed rail, inner-city light rail, study grants to the UC system, farm programs, park and rec programs. It also allows the governor, without a vote of the people, without a vote of the legislature, to transfer the money to cover general fund shortfalls. And so, Robin, look, if you if you want to oppose the gas tax repeal, fine, but at least – Respect your audience by giving them the truth. Well, let me it ask, let me so ask Robin easy before we take on. Hold on. Let me ask Robin about that. Because you said there is transparency and it's all going there. We've had a history. Again, a lot of these calls are history of we've been promised it would go to something and it doesn't. Is, is he correct in the fact that the governor can divert any of this money now? That they can look at this and go, we're going to divert this percentage to the general fund or other, th- other pet projects, whatever? Or is that completely wrong, completely erroneous, that nothing can be not. touched. Every penny has to go to transportation. Absolutely not. You should go to noprop6.com and you can see there where <laughs> the Prop 69 funds, it does not allow for any borrowing or diversions, even under fiscal emergencies. Under Prop 22, passed by the voters in 2010, that eliminated the ability of the legislature to borrow gas taxes, even in a fiscal emergency. You can look at the California Constitution, Article 19 for this, and Councilmember Carl over there is the politician in the room accusing 
accusing other politicians of doing what he is doing right uh, now. Con- Councilmember Carl, okay. give me give me thirty seconds. We're going to take a first and foremost. I will reiterate that uh, Robin said that it goes to roads and bridges only. It is dr- general transportation related purposes, and that's broadly defined to include almost any program, including the UC system. Second, there are two provisions in Prop sixty nine that say, except as provided in Government Code Section A and B. The following money shall be spent. Those two sections are shortfalls in the general fund, and that allows the governor to transfer the money without a vote of the legislature, without a vote of the people. The Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association confirms that fact, and you can read it for yourself in Prop 69. From our Facebook live stream, which you can go to, the state of California continues to win additional funds from the feds precisely because the state is one of the best and most efficient in spending transportation money. That's from Never Norman on our feed. And by the way, you can go to our feed, Facebook backslash KABC radio. Uh, we'll take more of your questions and get more to your calls as we continue the impact issues form on Prop 6 here on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Talk Radio 790 KBC. Peter Tuna 10 continues. Uh, again, thank you to our Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf for the delicious pastries and coffee for today's Prop 6 impact issues forum. All the lines are lit. Let me go to each of these calls and try and get to as many as we can before the top of the hour. Uh, Glenn in San Marino, welcome to the show. Good morning. What's your question? Hey, Peter. How are you? Good, man. Good to hear you. Great show. Uh, I have a, so many editorials in my head, but I have a direct question for Robin. Did we approve this tax as voters to begin with? Voters approved Prop 69, which dedicated our funds to ensure that they only go to transportation projects. And so absolutely, Prop 6 would overturn the will of the voters by undermining Prop 69. And I guess this particular gas tax that we're going after to try and repeal, did we vote that gas tax in? That's what I'm telling you. With Prop 69, voters decided that they wanted all of these funds to be dedicated for transportation purposes. Robin, you ought to to run for public office. You are as dishonest as the day is long. The reality is the question was, did we vote to approve the tax increase, the car tax and the gas tax increase? The answer is no. The politicians, by a two-thirds supermajority vote, voted to increase our taxes. They didn't even bother to give us a chance to vote on a tax increase and then you gave them a phony lockbox that actually has a bunch of loopholes which is by the way peter the third lockbox that we've been asked to vote for so how, by let me let me go to so how did this vote come about he's saying it, it was not voted <laughs> that was the specific question how did the tax increase? you can look at the june ballot 81 percent of voters voted for prop 69 no hold on Consi- no 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 no, no. no, no, no. Uh, stop he, interrupting he, no, me carl robin stop asked, interrupting me you're on, the call, politician in the room oh, go ahead. and i'm tired of being interrupted by you You've so you know on, what robin. this is about this is about public safety this is about what firefighters, what police officers, what highway patrol, what the but civil engineers who build our roads and bridges are saying that this is a dangerous, dangerous proposal. Yeah. And I'm tired of being interrupted by Carl DeMaio to put out inaccurate facts and to put out inaccurate statements right, about call. what voters have done and haven't done. We'll Look at call. the ballot in June. The, the, ahead, the, the, the caller was very specific. Did voters get to approve the car tax and gas tax increase? You said yes, Prop 69. Prop 69 was not a tax increase. What the tax increase was, was a vote of the politicians, two-thirds, for which State Senator Josh Newman was recalled from office and fired because he voted to increase taxes without giving it to the voters Let, to approve. Let's go to Nicole in Newbury Park. Nicole, go ahead. What's your question? I just wanted to ask Robin, as a mom of four and having a single income family, I've watched that none of the roads since Northridge have been uh, improved for what is it, 20 some odd years? So I've been paying these taxes for years and years and years. Why are you saying that SB1 is, is, improving the roads when I physically see that it's not. I've been paying taxes for a railway that's not been built. We need to vote yes on six. Right, let her, well, let her see. answer. So what, what is the answer? I didn't mean to cut you off, Nicole, but what is the answer to that question? Yeah, and I would say I feel your pain as a working mom. I absolutely want every penny to go to transportation funds, and Prop 6 would undermine that. And in fact, if you look back, we haven't had transportation funds in over 23 years, so that's why Nicole has, hasn't seen but that happen. What, what was going to transportation, though? You keep putting out that there was, there was money earmarked for transportation that went where? That's what she's asking. She's saying, I know we've been paying into infrastructure. Why haven't I, why haven't I seen it? 
Well, the, these funds, the, the SB1 funds, are dedicated to transportation. And so what Carl DeMaio wants to take away from working families is their commute, is the safety on our commute, right, on all of our call. roads. Let's answer and we'll take another Robin call. just said, we haven't had transportation funds for 20 years. We had one of the highest gas taxes in the nation prior to this latest increase, which gave us the highest gas tax. And now we have a car tax on top of that. Robin, do you really think that working families are that dumb that they're going to take your little talking points and say, oh, well, Robin said I haven't been paying the gas tax for 20 years. People are struggling. There's no Democrat or Republican way to go broke at the end of the month. This is shameful that politicians and PR flax like Robin are trying to take more money from All right, let's go to families. Armando in Van Nuys who's actually saying that the Valley has several projects already in effect. Go ahead, Armando. Hi, uh, Armando from Van Nuys. Uh, quick question. Um, so, obviously, being in Los Angeles, you drive around, there's tons of potholes. It's a uh, concern for safety, uh, it, it, it impacts traffic. So, uh, we talked about, you know, what will happen to the projects that are already underway. But what's going to happen to drivers and the cost in the long run? You know, how much is it going to cost drivers in the long run? We're investing now because we need it now. But what's going to happen in the long run if we don't invest? All right, that's a good question. What happens if that, we don't That is a good question because, you know, for every dollar that we don't spend right now, we're going to spend $5 in the future. That's what the civil engineers say, that for every dollar that we don't spend on road repairs, on, on maintaining our roads, we're going to have to quadruple, uh, quintuple those funds in the years to come. So that's really important to keep in mind. And you know, I would say don't listen to the politicians. Go to NoProp6.com and get the facts. It's really important to know, moving forward, exactly what's going to disappear. Carl, you want to answer that back? Well, if you want the facts, go to GasTaxRepeal.org. But you notice how Robin doesn't want to talk about the existing gas tax that we've been paying for decades. That money has been stolen and transferred, just like this latest increase will be stolen and transferred. The reality is, the caller's right, we have crappy roads. We all have already paid, though to have good roads and that money has been stolen. Nothing in this latest tax increase changes the fraud of diverting and wasting our gas tax funds. But we do have a proposal on our website, gastaxrepeal.org, that after Prop 6 passes and gives tax relief to working families, we are going to finish the job of road repairs by doing a replacement bill that would dedicate 100% of the existing gas tax to road repairs and nothing but road repairs. Let me ask you both a question and see if we can get one more call. Yeah. The state says we've had unprecedented uh, monies coming in. I mean, we've done really well. We have a surplus at this point. Is there another way around than inflicting some pain on folks, as you hear, who are struggling already with uh, the, the homeless issue? I mean, a billion dollars there, a potential parcel tax. There's going to be money there. So you're, they're getting hit, they're getting hit, they're getting hit. Is there a way to be more efficient, especially when we're looking at your bra – on one hand, they say we have a surplus. Congratulations. On the other – People are hearing we have to tax you. How do you put those things together? Well, and I think that's what's so misleading about Prop 6 is that these funds are already allocated. And so what Carl DeMaio is doing is undermining what's already in progress, road repairs that are already underway. And imagine what a waste it would be to stop those projects midway, to stop the safety and road repairs and the bridge repairs and the seismolog seismologists fixing our roads and bridges to make sure that we can survive earthquakes. That's not okay. Taking away the funds that are already there and 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 having a politician take those away and stop the projects and the progress that California has made, that's the problem. So, Carl, how do you address that? that Look, is, is we work? already pay enough in the original gas tax to have great roads, and that's why we believe that you should dedicate 100% of the original gas tax to road repairs. That, that is what people have already paid, and the money is there. How about we have less bus drivers earning $227,000 a year? How about we have less uh, bloated bureaucracies where the, the uh, legislative analyst's office proved that 3,500 Caltrans employees have been doing absolutely nothing? How about we have DMV accountability where they found a DMV worker who's been sleeping three hours a day for the past four years, and she still has a job. They don't fire her. How about we take the money and allocate it to the roads, which is what our alternative is and you do make a good point there is a surplus but the general fund is always taking the gas tax for more spending rather than contributing to infrastructure and maintenance but we Peter, need to do you know what Robin, let me do this we, we have about a minute and a half left yeah. Two minutes. you want to wrap up for 30 I, seconds I do because what, what Carl DeMaio is talking about is not on the November ballot what is on the November ballot is prop 6 which is extremely dangerous and that is why the highway patrol and the firefighters and the civil engineers who build our bridges and roads say no on prop 6 
damaging things can happen here. Catastrophes can happen here. And if we are not prepared for those, which is what Prop 6 would do, we are all in danger. And that's a problem. you got about 30 seconds to wrap up. Robbins come with her erroneous, uh, misleading statements as well as her fear-mongering scare tactics. And it's all designed to con you or scare you into parting with your hard-earned dollars. The reality is the cost of living is too much in California. A yes on Prop 6 vote will give you cost of living relief. Robin Swanson's site is nopop6.com and Twitter at noprop6. Carl DeMaio is gastaxrepeal.org and the Twitter's at Carl D-E. M-A-I-O. I thank you both for coming in. Thank you. And for keeping you somewhat civil. <laughs> and, Thanks, man. And, and giving our listeners some kind of context on Prop 6. And we'll address some other props soon. Thank you very much. Talk Radio 790 KBC. Dr. Drew and Lawrence Vaughn are next. <laughs>